Okay, looking back at an old example, um, one of the examples that I provided before was a query demo uh, for DynamoDB. So it's called Query Dynamo. And in that example, I mentioned that we would do a query. Um, so taking our Lambda code, accessing DynamoDB, and running a query on it. Um, but if you remember back to when we were working with the AWS CLI, a query involves the keys, but it doesn't necessarily have to be a complete key. Okay, so right now we're looking at a specific player, and when we run it, we do get that one specific player. So if I were to test this example right now that we had looked at in the past, you'll see that I do get that one specific player. Okay, in my result set. Um, but what if I were to modify this and say that um, there's not very many Kansas City Royals, but I know that there are a lot of Los Angeles Angels in the data set that you're working with. So I know that there's more than one record there. I think there's four or five. Um, so what if I were to say that I want the key um, matching team ID equal to player info underscore LAA, and then I was to leave off the sort key. Okay, and the idea here is that I'd run my query and I'd get multiple records back. I'd get the five player objects from the Los Angeles Angels. Okay, so if I were to make this change and deploy this, you're going to see that this doesn't work. Okay, and the error message it's telling me is the provided key element does not match the schema. Okay, and what's happening here is this get item command is really meant to retrieve a single record, a single record based on the complete key. So it was really forcing me to have a complete key here. Okay, so this is not really a query. I called it a query, um, and the function name was actually a query dynamo, um, but it's not really a query. It's get a single item from DynamoDB based on a key. So what I want to do is I actually want to look at an example of where we're actually doing a query um, based on that key. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this command, okay? And I actually want to jump back out to my functions, and I actually want to create a real query example. So I'm actually going to do a query answer all in one. So I'm going to call this query and filter dynamo. Okay, and it's going to be in Node.js 20. I'll go ahead and create that function. And the first thing I'm going to do um, before I really get into writing any code is I'm going to go to the configuration and I'm going to allow access for this function to access DynamoDB. So I'm going to go into the configuration. I'm going to open up this role in IAM, and I want to make sure that I have access to DynamoDB. So that's the first thing I'm going to provide read-only access, because it's a query and filter. I'm not going to insert a record or delete a record, so I'm going to provide read-only access. So now that my function can access DynamoDB, I should be able to go back over to my code, and if I were to put the code that I had from the original query demo from the get item command. So I just pasted that in as my example. I should be able to run this example now. Okay, and I, I just wanna make sure that we're back to a working state. So I'm gonna go ahead and configure a test event. I'm gonna call this my query and filter test. Okay, and my Event JSON doesn't really matter. I'm not using it at all. So I save it. And now if I test this out, I should get the same results as I was getting before. Uh, it looks like I didn't deploy the changes. Okay, and now if I test this, I should get the same results as before. I get the one record that matches that key. Okay, but again, like I said, I didn't want to have that key. I want to get all the players for the Los Angeles Angels. Okay, and when I did that, it caused problems for me. The get item command is expecting uh, one record to come back based on the parameters that I provided, based on this key. So now that I've changed it to team ID being player info underscore LAA, and I'm not including a sort key, 
Now I'm going to have an issue telling me that the provided key element doesn't match the schema. Okay, if you remember to when we were working with the AWS CLI, we didn't have a key. What instead we had was a parameter called the key condition expression. All right, so we had a key condition expression. And just for consistency sake, I'm going to put all of these params in quotes. Okay, and I'm going to get rid of this key. And the way the key condition expression worked is we had our essentially our where clause. Our where clause being um, team ID equal to some variable that I'm going to call colon T. Okay, so that was our key condition expression. And then once we had that, then we had to define our value for that variable colon T. And we did that through expression attribute values. Okay, where we defined colon T being equal to some value. And the way we, we did that is we used JSON. So bear with me for a second here. We had JSON where we had colon T equal to some value, which was um, the value of colon T, in our case, player info underscore LAA. And if you remember even further, uh, this became a problem because this value on the right-hand side needed to be marshaled. And what I mean by marshaled is it really needed that data type to indicate that it was a string. So what we ended up doing is we'd have another JSON object in here indicating that this was a string so that it looks something like that. And I, I have this X here because uh, these params have to be separated by commas. Okay, so our expression attribute values um, had to look something like what we have in code here. Okay, so once we have that, now we're set up so that we can run a query based on the team ID being player info underscore LAA. Um, so the thing that we're going to change is we're no longer going to run a get item command, which runs on a single item. We're going to run a query command. Okay, so instead of get item command, we're going to have a new query command passing in those parameters. And then I have it unmarshalling the data dot item. Well, I know that there's going to be more than one item. So instead of unmarshalling the data dot item, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to return the data. Okay, so that we can actually look at what the data looks like when we execute our query command. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and deploy this. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and test it out. Okay, and now you'll notice that I'm getting a collection of items. So I, I get back an object that has some metadata saying our status code is 200, which means it, it was okay. But then there's three matching records in my data set. So I have three players that are part of the angels. Okay, that's the result set that I have. Okay, and you might have a different result set because I've kind of messed around with the, the underlying data um, in my baseball stats table. But right now I have three records in that baseball stats that match um, the team ID being player info underscore LAA. Okay, so that's how we'd run a query. Okay, um, but we might also want to do a query and filter. So if I look at the execution results, um, I might want to say, let's filter for a specific player whose name is Shohei Otani, okay, or Albert Pujols, okay? So I wanna do a query, which gets us down to the three records that match the query, but then I'm gonna do a filter to filter it down to one specific record, okay? So the way I'm gonna do that is I have a key condition expression because team ID is part of the key, but then I'm also going to have a filter expression Okay, and the first filter expression I'm going to use is I'm going to say player name is equal to colon P. Okay, and I'm, I'm choosing player name specifically. I know it's going to be unique, so um, I could have probably just filtered immediately, um, but I'm, I'm in kind of intentionally going about this in a roundabout way, I'm choosing player name as opposed to position. Um, and the reason I'm doing that is because position is a keyword. 
Okay, so so bear with me for a second. So I want to filter based on player name. So now I want to say, okay, colon T is a player from the Angels, but then I also have this other variable, colon P, that's equal to a string that has a value of Shohei Otani. Okay, so I'm, I'm doing a key condition expression and a filter expression, and then I'm supplying both of those expression attribute values. I'm filling in the value for the corresponding parameter in both cases. For colon T, which is for the team ID, and then colon P, which is for the player name. Okay, so the team is going to be player info underscore LAA, and the name, the player name, is going to be Shohei Otani. I'll deploy those changes, and now I can test it out again. Okay, and now you'll notice that I scanned three records, but my result set is just one record. There's only one record that matches Shohei Otani. Okay, um, you'll see Shohei Otani is a starting pitcher. Our data set is not that big where there's multiple starting pitchers on the team. There is. So if I had a larger data set, we'd see this. Um, but in this case, we won't. But what I want to do is instead of filtering for a specific player name being Shohei Otani, I want to filter where the position is equal to SP for starting pitcher. Okay, and that's going to cause a problem because position is a keyword. Okay, so if I just said position is equal to colon P, I theoretically could just come through and say, okay, now instead of being uh, colon P being the player name, colon P is for the position, and I'll just change the value to starting pitcher. If I deploy this, you'll see the error message is actually pretty good here. It'll tell me something about the position being a reserved word. Okay, so it tells me attribute name is a reserved word, reserved keyword is position. Okay, so it's going to cause a problem. So I can work around that too. Um, so the way I'm going to handle that is I'm going to use an expression attribute names. And what I want to do is I want to remap the name of position. I don't want to actually use position for the name. But what I do is I set up essentially an alias. And you'll notice it's plural. So the way that ends up happening is uh, I'm going to say that, um, and I, I actually don't remember the order. I think it's pound sign POS is going to be for position. I think that's the order that I want them. So my alias for position is going to be pound sign POS or pound sign position. Okay, so when I refer to the position attribute, I'm going to refer to it as pound sign position. Okay, and it is case sensitive. So that my alias for the, the reserved attribute position is now pound sign position. And I'm missing a comma with my JSON. And now that I have that, now I should be able to run this. So I'm going to deploy the changes. And I'm going to go ahead and test this. And now you'll notice that I'm getting the one record that matches. Even though I've scanned three, I'm scanning the records to get only the records that match the team ID of player info underscore LAA. But then I'm doing a secondary thing, which is I'm filtering for only the players that match that position where they have a value of starting pitcher. Now, again, if I want to, um, I really have a collection of items. Okay, and the items right now are marshaled. So I want to unmarshal them. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take this and I'm going to say, here's my unmarshaled items. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to go to data.items. I'm going to look at each item. I'm going to send it into a function where I unmarshal it. And I'll unmarshal that item. And what that does, it's going to return all of the items into an array called unmarshaled items. And that's going to be my return value. Okay, so I'm going to deploy that. And now I'm just going to have the array of one record. And it looks like I did something wrong. Data.items is not a function. Um, I didn't mean data.items. I meant data.items.map. Okay, so I just had a typo on line 20. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and deploy that again and test it again. 
And now you'll notice that I have an array of that one item, and that one item has unmarshaled data. So there's no data attribute indicating that the sort key is a string or the player name position is a string. Um, it's just the uh, attribute and the corresponding value to that attribute for each item. Uh, you might notice or might question the fact that I have an array surrounding one item. Okay, and in this case, I'd probably just prefer the one item. Um, but really, I am doing a uh, query and a filter. And there's no guarantee that I only have one item. So I always like to leave it in an array in case there's multiple matching records. So in our data set, there's only one starting picture for the angels. But in reality, if I was to populate this with actual data, um, there would probably be 15 starting pitchers for the Los Angeles Angels. So um, I don't mind the way this response is formatted as an array of objects that match my query and filter criteria. OK, so um, I just wanted to kind of expand on this example um, that I had provided earlier so that we're actually doing a DynamoDB query as opposed to a get a single item. And then I also wanted to look at some of the other attributes that we had looked at when we looked at the AWS CLI so that we can start to apply key condition expressions, filter expressions, expression attribute values. So all of those different parameters that we used from the AWS CLI are now coming into play in AWS Lambda. And the reason for that is because we're still using the AWS SDK. It's just a matter of now we're using it through Lambda versus using it through the AWS CLI. Okay, so um, this is just an example of querying and filtering DynamoDB from Lambda.